So fourth uh, topic of this uh, time series econometrics theme uh, concerns about uh, co-integration. I will shortly discuss with you what, is, what does it mean and give you an uh, empirical example to sort of uh, illustrate your time series econometrics in action. But first, as a, as a motivation, let me introduce to you this uh, important term, spurious regression. So um, this can occur, of course, in any, any context where your regression analysis is used, but uh, particularly in time series analysis, if, we, if it's just naively regress uh, uh, some uh, time series where, for example, if you use the single regression model to uh, fit the regression model to two time series, which both have, a, for example, growth trend. It could be stochastic or de deterministic trend, but, uh, but uh, it would be very misleading to uh, directly fit uh, uh, this kind of static regression model to, to two variables which have a growth trend because, uh, because uh, it, it's very likely that this would be then, then just, uh, just a spurious regression. So um, notice that, of course, you can just take any two variables which have, uh, have some kind of uh, growth trend and this kind of static model would, uh, would uh, likely indicate some significant uh, uh, coefficient B2. So um, this is something that, uh, that uh, it's well known in econometrics, but, uh, but uh, uh, in my impression, it's uh, not so widely known in, uh, in uh, research community bro more broadly. So sometimes I have noticed in popular media that, uh, that uh, some researchers have found some uh, statistically significant relationship between uh, some two completely unrelated uh, variables and uh, and then they then they might make some big headlines about that but uh, but uh, to me it looks very much that it might be a spurious regression so uh, this is something that uh, it's important to be aware of if you are if you are using regression analysis uh, uh, in fact sometimes i'm a little bit worried also when when we talked about uh, some uh, some uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning and similar kind of techniques, which are just finding some uh, patterns in data without any kind of theory. So that, uh, that uh, might those patterns actually be just uh, this kind of spurious regression. So, so that could be also very much a concern in, uh, in more AI type of uh, uh, applications. So anyway, that's something to be, to be aware of and uh, this is, in fact, the big reason why I emphasized in the previous video lessons that why it's important to first uh, detrend our time series. So why I paid a lot of attention to first testing the, the unit route and uh, detrending the, the stochastic or deterministic trends and uh, make sure that our, our variables are stationary before applying the regression model to this time series data, because uh, uh, if we have a, have a stationary time series, or we have first detrended a non-stationary time series, then then uh, at least it's not just uh, driven by this kind of uh, uh, time trend. So we can be more comfortable that this is this is not just uh, just spurious regression. But of course, it might be that uh, that sometimes we are actually interested in not just in the level, but uh, sorry, not just in the change. So if we have difference to time. Uh, time series, then the regression equation itself is changing. So sometimes it might be that we are actually interested in the levels of the variables and those, uh, uh, how those are connected, uh, even if we have uh, there are some, some uh, growth trends, for example, unit root processes. So the question is then, what can we do then in order to not uh, fall to this naive uh, spurious regression problem? And uh, this is, for example, uh, work that uh, I have here referred to this Granger and, and uh, Newbold and there's Engel and Granger have done a lot of work in this, uh, this area, sharing the Nobel Prize also on this, on this work. So then it can, can be that we, we can utilize this kind of co-integration. So if you are interested in the relationship between the levels of the variables rather than their changes, and uh, then we, we have there some kind of uh, uh, growth trends, for example, in the variables. So the, this slide summarizes the idea of the co-integration briefly. So suppose that we have some two, two, two 
variables y and x both have a for example some stochastic growth trends characterized by the unit roots so of course then it would be naive to simply simply fit this kind of uh, static regression model like i have here but then if we find that the error term is actually stationary then we can still say that this uh, these series are co-integrated so it's possible that there is some kind of um, uh, long-term equilibrium relationship between these variables we don't necessarily see which one is, is x causing y or is y causing x if they are co-integrated uh, and so there's not necessarily such kind of direct uh, uh, causality between these variables but they are anyway fluctuating over time in the in the in the similar manner and this could be also also something that could be utilized for for forecasting purposes so in the next video lesson, I will talk more about the time series forecasting. So I would say that the co-integration analysis itself, uh, there, there is a lot, of the, a lot of econometric tools and it gets quite technical very quickly. So for the purposes of this course, I do not go very deeply to the co-integration analysis. Okay. I want to just uh, just illustrate you a little bit of the time series econometrics in action by using a, an empirical example to illustrate. So I hope that gives you some some flavor of what uh, what the time series econometrics uh, involves and what kind of tools there 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 are. Uh, but uh, but then to really understand the theory, then you you need to take more more advanced econometrics courses or more specialized time series courses. So, as an illustration of the of this, uh, I will I will uh, walk with you this kind of example adopted from a, a study by Tvir and Rogov, who who examined the uh, co-integration of oil storage, uh, oil availability, income and price in the in the USA. So notice that there we have here now four different time series: oil storage, oil availability. Income refers to the GDP of USA and price is probably some, some uh, market price of oil. And uh, uh, we assume that there exists some kind of existence of a long run equilibrium between these variables. So, so uh, we do not claim that there is some kind of direction of causality. So storage might uh, affect availability, but again, availability affects also storage and they all, all variables depend on income and, and, and price of oil. And uh, uh, in this study, then, then uh, Dvir and Rogoff apply so-called vector error correction model. And this equation is stated, uh, stated below. So, so notice that it's, it's stated in terms of vectors. So, so um, dependent variable and uh, anywhere where you notice this kind of uh, delta symbol. So that's the Greek uh, alphabet delta. So it refers to the difference. So it's in fact the change in these variables. And... Uh, and this dependent variable is in a vector form. So, so all the storage availability, income and price, or in fact changes in those four variables are used as the dependent variables. And this kind of uh, vector formulation allows this, uh, this uh, uh, all four variables depend on each other. And as the explanatory variables of this regression model, we have the levels, so this S in period T minus one, includes the lacked uh, values of the levels of storage availability income and, and price but then we have also the the lacked uh, changes in this uh, this uh, so this delta refers to changes and there's also time time lag so this is this error correction part these kind of changes lacked changes okay so at this point i want to highlight so so i will i will uh, utilize this, uh, this uh, model of Trier and Rogoff and the analysis that they have done for the oil storage in USA. But uh, in fact, my, my empirical results are based on another commodity. So I did this kind of analysis for, for some company and, uh, and they were interested in uh, storage and availability of another, comp another commodity. It's not oil, but something else. But, uh, but uh, because it was a consulting project, I cannot tell you which, which product we are talking about, but uh, the analysis is very similar to this, uh, to this analysis of, uh, of Trier and Rogoff, but my results are for some other commodity. So anyway, I will 
have the same kind of econometric procedure. And I think it's very useful to illustrate how this kind of uh, co-integration analysis proceeds. So as I have already emphasized before, I will start with the augmented Dickey-Fuller test of Uniroot applied to all those four, four variables. Uh, then we will test uh, statistically how many time lags we need in this uh, error correction part. Then we test for the core integration rank. I will explain also what does that mean. And then we get to the finally to the, uh, to the VECM results. And I'll tell you what we can read from those, those results. So this application has been done in, in Stata also. So firstly, as I have emphasized, the first step is to, is to apply the Dickey-Fuller test to find that do we have a unit root or, or not. So I have done this Dickey-Fuller test for all four variables. So there is storage of the commodity, availability of the commodity, uh, income in this case is actually the globe, world GDP, because we talk about the global market rather than the US as in the original paper. And then there's market price of this commodity. So in that sense, here is like four, four Dickey Fuller tests uh, <clears throat> for each of these four variables. Notice that in, in uh, none of these tests, uh, if you compare the test statistic to the critical values, uh, in none of these cases, we can actually uh, reject the null hypothesis at 5% or 1% or even 10% significance level. So in all of these cases, the null hypothesis uh, remains, which means that uh, in all of these, uh, all of these four variables, there is a, a stochastic trend. So we have a, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of unit root, but now instead of uh, detrending, because we use the co-integration analysis, we can keep this kind of kind of uh, uh, unit root, uh, this kind of uh, um, this kind of uh, variables that do have a unit root. So here we do not resort to detrending, but rather we use the co-integration analysis. So this is what the, the the key difference to this kind of static or dynamic models that we considered before, which would require the use of stationary data. We can use co-integration analysis even when we have this kind of uh, kind of um, uh, models with or, or the time series that do have unit root, and uh, we can then still uh, study the levels of storage and levels of availability. So notice that if we do detrending, then we don't have actually access anymore to the level of storage, for example. So. Then as a next process, next, next step in this process, I, I will resort to the uh, testing of the, the lag order. And uh, for that purposes, we have here in this, uh, uh, we have number of multiple uh, test statistics available. So I have here underlined this, uh, this FPE, AIC, HQIC, SBIC, that what kind of lag, how many lag time period lags uh, we would need for this error correction part. And uh, there is a little bit uh, uh, two differences depending on which test we would use. So, so first two tests are indicating that uh, we would need five, uh, five period lags uh, and, and uh, two subsequent tests indicate four time period lags. So uh, I have then resorted to the four, four lags uh, in the following. So, so we could, of course, based on this one, choose also five, but, uh, but uh, to keep it uh, simple, I, I resorted to four lags. Okay. So main point here is to illustrate that uh, we don't need to take it, uh, this number of lags in this model to arbitrarily. It's possible to test it uh, statistically also. So then the next step in the, the co-integration analysis is to test for the co-integration rank. And for that, there is also, also tools available, for example, in Stata. So this is based on uh, Søren Johansson's uh, work, uh, a Danish uh, econometrician. And um, here the purpose of this test of co-integration rank is to then determine how many different equations uh, do we need. So, so so the possibilities are that there is no co-integration, so there's zero equations. There can be one equation, two equations, three equations, or even four equations. So the question here is that how many, 
how many long run equations do we need? So it would be possible, for example, that uh, storage depend on availability, but not on income or price and income and price are co-integrated, but not storage and availability. So in that case, we will have two equations. But um, based on this test, uh, you can see there is this, uh, uh, on the rightmost columns, there is this sort of trace statistic, uh, and then there is this critical value. So comparing this uh, trace statistic and critical value, so uh, we, we can then, uh, at the 5% critical level, uh, we, we, we would then uh, uh, choose this, uh, this uh, one, uh, one equation, so, so rank would be equal to one. So notice that, uh, that uh, in, in that case, uh, we can, we can uh, this trace statistic is smaller than the critical value with the rank of zero, the statistic is, uh, is, uh, is higher. So, so we do not uh, reject the null hypothesis of the test. So in the, in this rank number one, we can reject the null hypothesis. Also, we can, we can reject it at uh, rank two or three, but, uh, but uh, we want to have, uh, in, in, for the sake of simplicity, we want to have as, as few equations as possible. So at the 5% significance level, then uh, we can reject the null hypothesis at this rank number one. So that means that a single co-integrating equation is, is enough for our purposes. So then we can proceed to estimate what is that, that, that long-term term relationship. Uh, so here is then this uh, uh, co-integrating equation, which is part of the part of this uh, vector error correction model. And uh, notice that this is uh, in this kind of uh, vector notation. So, so uh, all of these four variables are here on the left-hand side of the model, and there is a zero on the other side. So then, for example, if we would be interested in storage, so notice that if these coefficients are normalized here so that, uh, that storage get the coefficient of one, and, uh, and then these others are free coefficients to be, to be estimated. So if you are interested in the impact of availability or income or price on storage, then we could move these coefficients of all other variables to the right-hand side of the equation. So in that sense, uh, even though we have here in this table, we have negative coefficients for, for everything except storage, it actually means that if we, if we move those uh, availability, income and price to the right-hand side of the equation, you would see that then availability has a positive effect on storage and so does income and price. So all of these have a, have a positive impact on storage. So this, this kind of equality would then uh, indicate this kind of long-term equilibrium relationship between the storage and availability and income and price of this, of this uh, unknown commodity on, in this example. Okay. So this, this can be one of the main, main purposes in the co-integration analysis indeed to to get this kind of, uh, what is the long-term relationship uh, of this kind of variables? There, there is this kind of uh, unit root process in all of these, but, but with these kind of tools, we can, we can still infer that what is this kind of equilibrium uh, relationship in terms of the levels of these variables, rather than making some kind of uh, uh, first differences or, or so we, we actually get them this equilibrium relationship between storage availability income level and price level. Okay. So with this um, uh, vector error correction model, we can also get not just, uh, not just the equilibrium, long-term equilibrium, but we can also study the short run dynamics. So uh, with these results then, then indicates with this kind of lags that, okay, how this uh, in the short run, how the, how, for example, uh, storage response to the availability or income or price or how availability depends on the income and price and so on and so on. So uh, I think this is too, too big table to, to go through in more detail. I just want to, want to mention that this is what this vector error correction model can do is to also, also we can apply it to study the this kind of short run dynamics, how, the, how, the, how this kind of model is adjusting towards this, uh, this long run uh, equilibrium that, uh, that we examined uh, before.
but um, my purpose is not to go to like really really in the in the great uh, amount of of uh, of details again i want to want to emphasize here that the purpose of the core integration analysis uh, at least in this case was to was to study this long term relationship uh, on the levels of these variables, even when these levels of the of these variables have a unit root, so all of them had a had a stochastic trend, but uh, using the core integration analysis, it's possible to to study the the long term relationship between the levels of these variables and also the short uh, short run dynamics. But for that purpose, we need something like like a vector error correction model on something like that, like this. So so simply. Doing some static regression model on the on this kind of time series can be extremely misleading and be subject to the spurious correlation. So hopefully that can also example motivate you if you're interested in that sort of uh, uh, time series modeling, then to to study the topic further in some specialized time series courses or more advanced econometrics courses. So on this theme, I will then uh, prepare one more video lesson and, and talk about time series forecasting. So thanks for your attention and see you on the next video.